So DaVinci Resolve just announced support for ProRes RAW in their latest version 20.2. And I think that may make some Final Cut Pro editors more interested in using DaVinci Resolve as an option for their color grading portion of their workflow at least. And I think it's useful to know multiple applications. So for those Final Cut folks who are interested, this video is specific to how you can use ProRes RAW in DaVinci Resolve. I'm starting in Final Cut Pro because I want to make sure that we're starting from the same point and understanding how we work with ProRes RAW in Final Cut Pro, and then we can see how it works in DaVinci Resolve. So I have two clips here in Final Cut, both shot with a Ninja 5 connected to a Sony a7S III. And the reason I have two shots is one was created before the ability to adjust color temperature was added. And I just want you to see how those both work. So if we go to the inspector for our first shot and we're over on the info inspector here in the inspector, we need to get out of the basic view. So I'm gonna to go to the extended view because that's gonna show me, just before I go there, you can see right now the codec is Apple ProRes RAW, but we can't see anything else and we can see the image. So Final Cut's doing something because by default, you cannot see raw data. It needs to be demosaic or de into some kind of color space to be able to see it. So what's actually happening here? Well, if we go to the extended view, for example, we can see that a camera LUT is being applied automatically. Based on the metadata, it assumed that this is the correct camera LUT to apply. And normally it would be, however, I did use a custom uh, LUT on my Ninja 5 when I shot this, so it's not exactly right. Now yours may say none, and you can choose the appropriate lookup table based on your camera. This isn't the full picture though. If we scroll down, we can choose Modify ProRes RAW Settings. And in here, in addition to the process using, which is just an empty pop-up, I'm not, I think this may apply if we're doing red RAW conversion or other conversion, but uh, in this case, what we're interested in is this RAW to log conversion. Don't confuse RAW to log conversion with the LUT right here. These are different things. The first step is to convert the raw into a working color space. So in this case, it assumed that working color space is Sony S-Log3 slash S-Gamut3. That's the gamma and the gamut, or the color space and the gamma curve that it's assuming, which is basically correct. Uh, that was the Sony color science. So the raw camera data is converted into a log format. After that, Final Cut Pro is converting from log to Rec. 709 using this camera LUT. I mentioned it's not exactly right. In my case, I'm using one of these phantom LUTs. So I would apply that one instead for the conversion from log into Rec. 709. So the important thing to understand here in all this is you're going through two conversions. You're first converting the raw camera data into a working color space in this case, a log color space specific to the camera science. And the second part is converting it into the Rec. 709 working color space because we're delivering in Rec. 709. Now you don't have to use a camera LUT. You could set this to none and you could grade manually. You could also apply in Final Cut Pro a custom LUT that's applied uh, downstream from your color grading, which often can be a better idea, especially if your source material is clipped. In our case, however, we're in good shape here. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now, but most of you probably recognize when I say, rather than using a camera LUT, you can set it to none and use the custom LUT effect and apply your LUT that will be applied after your color grade. The other thing to notice here is our ISO and color temperature are listed here. If we go back into our ProRes RAW settings, we can see that we can adjust the ISO. This is basically as if you were back on set adjusting it in the camera. So we could adjust the ISO here higher or lower. And I'll go back to what it was before because it seems appropriate. 
but I cannot adjust color temperature. And that was because the firmware on the Ninja 5 wasn't upgraded at the time to support that. However, if we go to this next clip, we can see that I'm able to adjust color temperature as well as ISO for this clip. We can still see we've got the same Rotolog log conversion here. And over in the inspector here, we've got this camera LUT. I'm gonna switch this over to my Phantom LUT that I used on the Ninja 5 when I shot it to get something a little more appropriate. Let's go back to the beginning of that clip. And I can now adjust color temperature. In fact, I purposefully shot this with an incorrect color temperature of 7,000, but let's go back to something like 5,500 daylight temperature. And you can see we get a new, and you can see we get a more balanced shot. You can see right here in the RGB parade, and we have a decent starting point for a grade. So in Final Cut Pro, you go to the inspector where you can access the ProRes RAW settings. You can adjust the RAW to log conversion, change your ISO, change your color temperature, if your source allows for that. And then you can decide if you want to use a camera LUT or not. Okay, with that knowledge, let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve. Now you'll need version 20.2 to get this ProRes RAW support. I have the same two clips here and I'm in the color page and you'll notice by the gray outline here, I do not have any color correction on either of these clips. If you're brand new to Resolve, I highly recommend Steve's overview of core training for DaVinci Resolve that will take you through all the pages. And then I definitely recommend, I have a brand new color grading in DaVinci Resolve tutorial that's still on sale as of uh, until the end of this month, September. And you wanna check that out to get all the details here. That is a plug, we don't have sponsors. So I'm plugging uh, both of our tutorials there. Okay, now the thing to understand in DaVinci Resolve is how color is managed when working with RAW. So first thing I'm gonna do is press Shift-9 to bring up my project settings. In the project settings, there is a camera RAW palette. There's also color management. I'll just mention it right now. I have color management turned off. This is, these are the defaults. So I'm just working with standard color science and I'm working in Rec. 709, just like we were in Fonica Pro. In the camera raw section is where you would normally set your profile for your raw material. If most of those clips or all those clips were from the same camera, you could choose that uh, camera or that raw type here and then set up all the settings and pretty much be done. If you have other clips from other cameras, you could bypass this and set them individually in the color page, even in an edit page actually in the edit page actually. The thing I wanna point out to you here is there is no raw profile for ProRes RAW. I suspect in the future there will be. So let's stay tuned for that. It doesn't mean you can't work with ProRes RAW. It just means we need to kind of do it individually. So I just wanna point that out. I'm gonna cancel this, go back here. And that's number one. Number two is the camera raw palette. Whenever you wanna override those settings in our project settings, you go to the camera raw palette. And you can see right now, decode is set to the camera metadata, which basically means, hey, I'm gonna try to read it and figure it out for you. Much like in Fonica Pro, we saw it automatically apply to conversion. And in fact, you can see grayed out here, there's a raw to log conversion. So it's done that and it's used HLG, which is completely wrong. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do, and you can do this for multiple clips, but you can't do it for multiple clips in the color page. I just want to point out if we jump over to the edit page and we select this same clip over in our inspector here on the image tab, we have this same information. So from here, we could actually select multiple clips and make these changes all at once. So you can do a batch, but I'm going to focus on the color page. So. I'm gonna switch from decode using camera metadata to clip, which means, hey, on this clip itself, I wanna make some changes. So once again, we can see we can adjust ISO. We cannot adjust color temperature for the reasons I just outlined over in Final Cut Pro, but our raw to log conversion is wrong here. So I'm gonna go down to our Sony S-Log3 to S-Gamut3 Cine Gamma and Gamut. 
and immediately we get what looks like a log encoded clip. So that's fantastic. Uh, we can adjust the ISO if we feel that we need to bring in more shadow detail or, or more highlight detail. You know, we could bring this down to see if we get a little more highlight detail in there. I don't really need to here. I think it's pretty good as is. So now we essentially have a log encoded clip and we can decide how we want to get this log encoded clip into our working color space of Rec. 709. I go into great detail on the options for doing this and how to do it and why you choose different options in the color grading tutorial. But basically, you can grade it manually, which I wouldn't always recommend. Uh, you can use a LUT, you can use a color space transform, or can you use Resolve's color management. In this case, I'm going to right click on this clip and just apply a LUT. And I'm just going to go down to Sony and choose this LUT here. It's included type A, which is a Mac thing. I'm on a Mac. And that's going to be a going to give me a decent starting point conversion. I don't have those same LUTs installed here that I do in Final Cut Pro in order to use those. So I can just use this as a starting point. So now I've got a starting point for my grade. And now that I'm resolved, I've got all the great tools of my my color wheels, my HDR wheels, my curves, color warper. I've got a massive set of tools available to me to do my color correction. And I've got a great deal of dynamic range that I'm working with because I'm working with something that started as ProRes RAW. Even when I've applied a LUT, I'm not going to get any clipping there. Okay, we saw we couldn't change color temperature. Let's go to this next clip that was shot with a more recent version of the firmware on the Ninja 5. And for this one, let's also go to our camera raw palette, go to clip and get out of this HLG default. I don't know why it's doing that by default. It's very interesting. I'll change it to, uh, let's see which one. I don't think it matters. I'll choose Gamut 3 Cine for the raw log raw to log conversion. And you can see now we have a color temperature option. I'm not going to do anything with that quite yet because just like um, before, now that we're in log, we want to get into our Rec. 7 on color space. This time I'm going to use a color space transform node. It's generally a, a, a better way to convert into the Rec. 7 on color space because it's less likely to cause clipping and it's more mathematically accurate. I've already created this node just to save a little time here. If I go to the effects tab, I can see that I've actually deleted it. So I need to add it back on again when I cleared everything out. So I'll quickly put that back on. My input color space here is Sony. And my input gamma is S-Log3. It just splits the gamma and gamut into two separate components. And my output, my output color space is my timeline. That's all I really need to do there. So I'll connect this up to this CST and go to my output. And you can see immediately, I'll toggle that on and off, we go from a log encoded clip to a Rec. 709 clip that has decent dynamic range and more contrast that you expect to see. So this is basically looks like kind of how it was shot. Again, it's a little warm. You can even see it in the RGP parade, just like we did in Final Cut. I can go over to my color temperature control here, and I'm just going to type in 5500, and you'll see our RGB ray balances out, and we have a more balanced shot to start with. Uh, this is a more effective way to adjust color temperature here in the camera raw settings than it is to add a corrector and do it there. You're working with the source data, so you're less likely to get any clipping or artifacting from doing that. So that's the second option in order to get it in uh, ProRes RAW into the working color space. There is one more. I'm going to extract that node with E. So we're back to our log. And then I'm going to go to Shift 9, back to our project settings, and just show you color management. So if I go to color management, I'm going to enable color management. And we're just going to stick with standard dynamic range, Rec. 709 and click Save. And immediately you'll see this clip looks correct. And this clip looks terrible because we have this LUT applied. So let's remove that LUT. And now, without any color grading, without any LUT, we immediately have good starting points because Resolve Color Management is automatically for us 
applying the raw to log conversion as well as the log to rec 709 conversion which doesn't always work perfectly but you always have the option to bypass it you can bypass the whole thing or just the input color management keeping the color management for your output in place so resolve gives you a lot of options on how to handle that just for example so you can see if i chose to bypass the input color management for this clip i can then choose my own raw to log conversion rather than it doing it automatically i'll put that back so you have a lot of flexibility here in order to work with ProRes RAW. And you can see it works in DaVinci Resolve pretty similar to how it works in Final Cut Pro, except that DaVinci Resolve, because it has this Resolve color management option, and it gives you a lot more options. Again, you can, you can do that color grading manually. You can use a lot. You can use color space transform. You can actually use multiple color space transforms so that your timeline color space is much broader than your output color space. Or you can use Resolve color management I go into great detail in my color management tutorial for Resolve. So if this looks like something you want to explore, definitely check that out. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.